Significantly, the new code prohibits the use of evidence which was illegally obtained, and it expands the defendant's right to an access to counsel before questioning by police. Finally, to ensure the protection of fundamental rights, the new code requires that it be interpreted consistently with the European Convention on Human Rights and the European Court's decisions. This requirement will be a truly remarkable change if it's in implemented. It will be a truly remarkable change for any post-Soviet legal system. Significantly, the law also gives prosecutors an essential tool for dismantling criminal organizations and conspiracies. The use of guilty, guilty pleas and cooperation agreements, which in the experience of American prosecutors, are essential to prosecute the higher echelons of criminal organizations. That is good news for Ukraine, but to make it work, the prosecutors and police have to follow the law, including those provisions which might make their jobs actually more difficult. Like informing suspects of their right to remain silent or have an attorney present. We know this experience in America. You've seen it on American TV uh, programs, I'm sure, where as they wrap up the criminal and take him away in handcuffs, they're reading him his rights so that uh, he knows that he doesn't have to say something, that anything he says he can be used in a court of law against him. Without so many involuntary or coerced confessions, real evidence derived from real police investigative work will have to be obtained to detain people and to convict them. Courts will also be under increased pressure to be professional, independent, and accountable. As well, and qualified defense lawyers must aggressively insist that their clients' rights be observed by the police, prosecutors, and the courts. And to make it all work, suspects and defendants need qualified lawyers who think proactively about their clients' defense, even if they cannot afford counsel. The government of Ukraine is working to improve its law on the bar and is beginning to implement the free legal aid system. Lastly, we'll need to see in Ukraine a shift in the mindset of lawyers. And you can see I'm now moving toward the next generation. And in a minute, I'm going to talk about the role of Ukrainian law students. Beyond all of these institutional changes, which I've described, I, hope I haven't put you to sleep with all of the, the pieces, but they're really important. If they're implemented, it's going to change the whole ballgame here. But beyond these institutional changes, we think a change of culture among lawyers in Ukraine is needed. One good change taking place is the increasing number of lawyers here who are doing pro bono work. This has become an essential part of the legal profession in many parts of the world. Free of charge legal services provide access to the justice system for individuals who otherwise are unable to afford quality legal services. Pro bono work enhances the reputation of lawyers and their firms. It provides opportunities to learn new areas of the law and it broadens personal and professional context. Citizens' access to justice throughout Ukraine is limited and consistent, but pro bono lawyers are helping prevent individuals from being unlawfully denied housing, from wrongfully losing their jobs, from being subjected to domestic violence. The U.S. government's been proud to support pro bono attorneys and to award those who've distinguished themselves by their pro bono service over the last two years. Okay, the last part, the role of Ukrainian law students. I've spoken at length about why I think the rule of law is important, what specifically Ukraine needs to do to focus, what Ukraine needs to focus on to ensure its establishment here. But before I conclude, I have to say a few words directly to each of the students. I hope there's a lot of law students here, right? How many law students are here? Yeah, we got a lot of students. Okay, this is you guys. And the, the rest of you may not be in the law, but you'll have something to do with it, so pay attention to it. For the most part, what I'm going to say is obvious. This is the work in which you guys will be engaged in the very near future. The success of the rule of law in Ukraine will depend in a large part on what you and other law students in this country do. Albert Einstein once remarked, as long as I have any choice, 
I will stay only in a country where political liberty, toleration, and equality of all citizens before the law are the rule. If these words sound wise to you, it's up to you to make yourselves part of that core group who will ensure that Ukraine is and remains a country where its citizens will not desire to seek other lands to call their home. Creating a culture of respect for human rights and the rule of law upheld by an accessible and effective justice system requires the commitment for the entire legal community in Ukraine, including student law clinics, law advocacy organizations, public legal aid offices, and law firms, all working together in partnership. I encourage all of you to work to ensure that the needed reforms are not only enacted into legislation, but implemented in practice. Accountability and equality before the law require not just the appearance of change, but a new expectation that institutions will function as the law requires. People with a vested interest in the status quo, status quo will not demand this change, and they will point out where implementation falls short. We foreigners can help you, but ultimately, it's up to Ukrainians. It's up to you. This is your challenge. Ukraine has been independent for 20 years, which is literally not such a long time for those of us, those old guys and old ladies who were already adults when the Soviet Union dissolved. For you, however, Ukrainian independence has been a fact for most, if not all, of your lives. I believe this gives you a different perspective from the older generations who still believe, may believe, that they have no power to affect change. This is your country and you will ultimately be responsible for it when your generation, when it is your generation's turn to govern. Some of you will work for government, some will be prosecutors, defense lawyers, judges, maybe do other work in the private sector. Success in all of these areas is currently harder than it needs to be. The sooner the rule of law is the law of the land, the better your future and the better your country. I urge each of you to find your own way of contributing to bring this change about sooner rather than later. Whether you engage in pro bono work as a lawyer, devote your education to supporting an NGO, or work in government of the judicial system, insist on accountability, insist on, on transparency. Do not settle for the status quo. As President Obama keeps reminding all of us Americans, rise up to, don't shrink from the harder challenges. Let me con conclude with a marvelous paraphrase of that Aristotelian quotation which I began. This one comes from uh, Dwight David Eisenhower, our 34th President of the United States and the Commander of All Allied Forces during World War II. And he observes, in a very pragmatic Kansas fashion, the clearest way to show what the rule of law means to us in everyday life is to recall what's happened when there is no rule of law. As Ukrainian students of the law, your challenge will be to help ensure your country's citizens enjoy the benefits of a society in which all are equal before the law. Thank you very much for listening to me. I'll be happy to answer your questions.